welcome back, welcome back to another episode, number 27, it's only one way to have, another one for the tribe, tribe, all praises the most high, high, doth not wisdom call, and understanding put forth her voice at the top of high places, where the paths meet, the gates of the let me know what you think about these dragons in the comments. We're just talking lost tribes and promised lands. The seed of Abraham. We're now tapped in with Dragon Canoe. We're steadily rowing and we're constantly flowing. All praise to the Most High. Allah. Let's go. We're going Get the vibes going, get the flu flowing. Let's get it. Popping off in Micah 1. For the word of the Most High that came to Micah the Morishite, who prophesied concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Who prophesied concerning Samaria and Jerusalem in the reigns of kings Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah of Judah. Listen, all you peoples, give heed. Hold earth and all it holds, and let my power, your power, the most high, ah, be your accuser. My power from his holy abode, for lo, the most high is coming forth from his dwelling pit, from his dwelling place. He will come down and stride, he will come down and stride upon the heights of the earth. The mountains shall melt under him. The mountains shall melt under him and the valleys burst open, like wax before fire, like water cascading down a slope. All this is for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? But Samaria, and what the shrines of Judah, but Jerusalem. So I will turn Samaria into a ruin in open country, into ground for planting vineyards. For I will tumble her stones into the valley and lay her foundations bare. All her sculpted images shall be smashed, and all her harlot's wealth be burned, and I will make a waste heap of all her idols, for they were amassed from fees for harlotry, and they shall become harlot's fees again. Let's go. Just popping off. Time. Time. Let's get it. Section 107 of the Copyright Act provides a statutory framework for determining whether something is a fair use. Identifying certain types of uses, we're talking criticism, comment, who's reporting, teaching, and scholarship, and research. Let's go. Are we, are you, the Dracons, the dragons, found in America? Let me know what you think. Tapped with Dragon Canoe, or steadily roam, but were constantly flowing. For it was Tecumseh's doing, it was Tecumseh's doing. He did have supernatural powers. He had to. It was a terrifying thought, but almost impossible to deny. First the comet, then this, the ultimate ghost stands, a rattling of the whole cosmos. And the tremors kept on for weeks, as if the world might burst on. Most High will come down and stride upon thee. He had to have some and it was a terrifying thought, almost impossible to deny. First, the comet, right, the crouching panther, blazing comet, the kumse, the ultimate ghost stands, as if the world might burst apart. We're talking the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. Are we talking mud flood? Let's go. Are we talking prophets? It is almost certainly no coincidence that the same dichotomy between positive and negative ideas about serpents and dragons is to be found in the Old Test, where on one hand they can denote divine power, and on the other, mortal danger. Dragons, or Tani, Tani, dragons, Malachim, Tani are frequently invoked by the prophets or in the Psalms, 
and the evil people are either oppressed by their enemies or have strayed from the path of righteousness. Either oppressed by their enemies or have strayed from the path of righteousness. In the main, these draconic invocations are purely rhetorical and typically negative. For example, the wine of sinners of Sodom and Gomorrah is the poison of dragons. The wine of sinners of Sodom and Gomorrah is the poison of dragons. A part of Hawaii's punishment of the unrighteous at the second coming will be inhabitation of dragons. And, says the prophet Michael, at the downfall of Samaria and Jerusalem, he makes the hills melt to mean dragon or dinosaur. Contrary to all this are the two positive depictions of the dragon serpent that are told of in connection with Moshe. Two positive depictions of the dragon told of in connection with Moshe. Moshe. First of these episodes takes place in Exodus, during the time when Moshe is seeking to persuade Pharaoh to allow him to leave his oppressed people. But the dragons are frequently invoked when they're either oppressed fall from the path of righteousness to persuade Pharaoh to allow him to lead his oppressed people out of Egypt. Hawa instructs Moshe that when Pharaoh tells him to perform a miracle, his older brother, prophet Aaron, should cast down his rod before Pharaoh, whereupon it will become a serpent. Whereupon it will become a serpent. When this comes about, Pharaoh summons his wise men and sorcerers and has them throw down their rods in response. So they try to pop an off on Aaron, all of which likewise become serpents. But even when Aaron's serpent swallows them all, Aaron's serpent swallows them all, Pharaoh remains unmoved. Now Hawa tells Moshe to go to the banks of the river Nile, and when Pharaoh arrives to throw down Aaron's red serpent, so when Pharaoh arrives, throw down Aaron's serpent rod. After which, Aaron should raise the rod over all of Egypt's water sources and water stores. But the Most High will come down and stride upon them. The outcome being that the Nile is turned to blood and all of Egypt's water contaminated. They go, popping up, popping up. Tanin, meaning in the Bible. Old Testament Hebrew lexicon of the serpent or venomous snake for Aaron's rod or turn into a serpent. Right? It didn't move Pharaoh till he dipped it in the water and water turned blood and all of Egypt's bodies. The second episode is recounted in the book of Numbers when Moshe, now in search of the promised land, is forced to lead the Hebrew people along a barren, circuitous route past the borders of their enemies, or the enemies of the Hebrews. The circuitous route past the borders of their enemies, where there are infestations of deadly snakes, and many are bitten. Hawa now tells and intervenes and tells Moshe to make a fiery serpent, or seraph, seraphim, malakim, ophanim, anashim, talking angels and dragons, simply meaning one made of brass, and to mount it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had been any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. He lived. The destruction of this brass serpent is said to have taken place centuries later, when the reformed King Khan Hezekiah sought to destroy any objects that the Israelites, his subjects, had taken idolizing. taken to idolize. Aside from those metaphorical negative expressions and positive manifestations of Hawaz, patronage of the Hebrews, there is just one other dragon-like creature in the canonical Old Testament that plays a meaningful role. This is the sea monster, Leviathan. Sea monster, Leviathan. Dragon, dinosaur, sea or river monster, serpent, venomous snake. Tanin, Leviathan, Serpent, Sea Monster. Besides being a vast, scaly, fire breathing dragon of the deep, Leviathan is invulnerable to weapons and utterly fearless. A 
upon earth there is not who is like, who is made without fear, says Job. <laughs> upon earth, upon earth, there is not his like, who is made without fear. There are, however, no specific myths about the fire, and we are left with a further four tantalizing references. In Psalm 74, 14, Hawaii is said to break the heads of Leviathan in pieces. Hawaii said to break the heads of Leviathan in pieces. He gave us him to be meat. He gave us him to be meat to the people in the wilderness. Leviathan was given to be meat to the people. And Leviathan is mentioned as an example of the marvels of Hawaii's creation. Just an example of the marvels of Hawaii's creation. Yet in Isaiah, it is foretold that Hawa will destroy Leviathan. And that day, the Most Highest of Hosts, with his sore and great and strong sword, his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Example of the marvels of the Wise Dragon. Reference here to that day is what was ultimate judgment at the end of all time. In the book of Amos, however, there is what appears to be another apocalyptic reference to Leviathan, in which the sea monster is an instrument of Hawaii's power. The dragon or dinosaur, sea or river monster, serpent or venomous snake. In this case, a sea monster is an instrument of Hawaii's power. Amos reports Hawaii saying that even if his enemies are hiding at the bottom of the sea, he will command the serpent and he shall bite them. He will command the serpent and he shall bite them. All said then, the Old Testament references we have for Leviathan do not entirely add up, they say. The reason for these apparent contradictions may due to differing sources for and ideas about Leviathan, an instrument of Hawaii's power. In the description in Job, Hawaii seems almost to relish his creation of the souls. His creation, his creation. Your mother and father above the most high supposed creation of the souls. Employment of Leviathan. Employment. Dragons are dispatched by Greatest quarterback of all time, addition of them. <laughs> Employment of Leviathan. These may well be derived from the Egyptian myth of the counterbalance of forces of Apep and Ra, they say, right? As being embodied in the power of Ra. Embodied in the power of Ra. The power of Ra. Ra will come down and stride upon them. As for the references to Leviathan in Psalms and Isaiah, they would appear to reflect, or perhaps be near the start of, a tradition in which Leviathan is demonized. The skull, the wise creation, the names of the angels correspond in like manner to events which are the angels' task to realize, the angels' task to realize those orders, those orders of dragons. When Hawaii dispatched angels to Abraham to announce the glad tidings, they resembled and were thus called men. Hashim, when Hawaii sent the angels to destroy Sodom, they were called angels. Malachim, when Hawaii sent them into Isaiah to burn him with hot coal because he neglected to warn Israel, they were called Seraphim. As it is said, the flew of the Seraphim into me having a live coal in his hand, and he laid it upon my mouth. Ezekiel saw them before the one is an animal. They were called Hayat, creatures. The angels were told, which turned out when they on Ophani, wheels, the most elevated into the light we call Cherubim, because each elevated being among them is called Carol. And as it is said of the king of Tyre, thou was the anointed Carol that covered them. Let's go, we're talking about the dragons. Talking levels, orders of Jacob. Employment. I gave him a job and for all the books of the twelve were considered not several yet, but as one. Alright, we get into the prophets. Books of the twelve. 
not step But as one, the books of the former prophets have been given out certain early prophets in the times. Joshua, ah, Joshua, ah, that's the story of the conquest of Palestine, the conquest of Palestine. According to Samuel, the life of that prophet, the life of David, whom I will raise up in the first king. Uh, the vision of the monarchy and the reigns of the kings of Israel and Judah. To the end of both kingdoms, together with the work of the prophets during the last period, especially of Elijah and Elisha. The books of the latter prophets consist of Isaiah. We are talking about books of the twelve prophets. The books of the latter prophets consist of Isaiah. Great a century preacher in Jerusalem, Jeremiah of Anathoth. Jeremiah, a stern spiritual leader who lived just before and after the fall of the city in 597, and Ezekiel, about the prophet of the Babylonian exile. Let's go. Ezekiel, about the prophet of the Babylonian exile. Dreamed and planned, dreamed and planned every story in the state. The dragons are employed by the Most High, right? These books are followed by the Twelve, right? For the dragons are invoked by the prophets. Either the people are oppressed or stray from the path of righteousness. These books are followed by the Twelve, which are named for the prophets who figure in them. The prophets figure of them, right? The prophet who warned Israel of its coming ruin, Hosea about the prophet who interpreted this disaster in terms of his own domestic tragedy, Micah about the prophet of Judea who lived through the disaster of 722 and foresaw a similar catastrophe for Jerusalem. Micah is, I will make a wailing like the dragons. I will make a wailing like the dragons. Let's go, man. A wailing like the dragons. Or employed by the most high. Dispatched. Zephaniah concerning King Josiah's contemporary. Zephaniah, the prophet concerning Khan Josiah's contemporary, who warned his people of the coming day of the most high. The coming day of the most high. Where only a remnant of Judah would be saved. Only a remnant of Judah would be Say, O Jacob, and the whom about the prophet who predicted the fall of the Assyrian capital city of Nineveh, Habakkuk, concerning the prophet who dealt with the delay, and who watched judgment, Haggai and Zechariah, concerning the prophets who preached during the rebuilding of the temple, and Obadiah, about the prophet who composed a song of hate for him. For Moshe was forced to take a circuitous route around his enemies, where many of his people were bitten by snakes. Moshe instructed him to create a brass serpent to protect his people. Obadiah, about the prophet who composed a song of hate for Edom, the old enemy of the Hebrews, the enemy of the Hebrews. Malachi and Joel concerning the prophets who prophesied the coming day of judgment. Jonah about the disobedient prophet whose terrible adventure with the sea monster converted him to Judaism. Jonah of the disobedient prophet whose terrible adventure because the Most High is terrible adventure with a sea monster, Leviathan, who is dispatched, who is employed by the Most High. And he raises up himself a mighty arm frame by reason of breaking. They purify themselves. He raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid, by reason of breakings, they purify themselves. Some saw hope for the conversion of the heathen, even of the barbarous Nineveh, and of two. Zechariah, containing a glorious prophecy of the reign of the Most High, for the reign of Obad. The twelve prophetic books listed above in approximate chronological order were chiefly concerned with coming doom, chiefly concerned with coming doom, the 
ultimate ghost dance. But to come say stuff down every house you tell that you tell. With the coming doom for the prophets invoke the dragons, either oppressed or when the people stray from the path of righteousness. The books foresaw the approaching catastrophes of the nations, not only of Israel and Judah, but of the others as well in the light of divine judgment. But beyond the day of judgment, they saw hope for a better time to come. Out of this unconquerable hope, we will believe in this young age. Article 1, Section 8 of the Federal Constitution states, Congress shall have the power, they say, to regulate commerce with foreign nations among several states and with the Indians. Right, so the Constitution gives Congress the power to regulate commerce with the Indians, they say. Even before the drafting of the Constitution, the Northwest Ordinance passed by the Confederation Congress in 1787 stated, utmost good faith shall always be observed to capology their land and property shall never be taken from them without their consent they say and in their property rights and liberty they shall never be invaded or disturbed they say talking the ultimate go stands for Tecumseh they must have had supernatural powers for every house in Tecumseh town was stomped down while Christianity was taking hold of the mixed blood elite the old beliefs still captivated everyone else. The old beliefs still captivated everyone else. Many were disturbed by the modern ideas, and it shook with frightening news of the Cherokee Company, who had taken shelter in an abandoned Georgia capital. And there had been a vision, there had been seen a vision that lit up the nation. One night, they'd been jolted away by thunder and lightning, but when they went to the window, they found instead a brain. Hundreds of Indians in one pain, galloping across the sky, galloping across the night sky, black horses, all to the terrible pounding of unseen drums. The ultimate ghost dance movement. For every house in Tukumachi was stomped down. And these Indians were shouting themselves hoarse, saying that the Great Spirit was enraged. The Great Spirit was enraged because the Cherokee had let the whites over in their country change its ways for the dragons are invoked either the people oppressed straight from the path of righteousness shall have no power he said the most so began the ghost dance so began the ultimate ghost dance if the missionaries were pulling the nation the ghost dance movement was making it back. It drew on laws and longing to rouse the bygone spirit of the Cherokee, to cast off all things white. It had many seals, but one above all, the one-eyed Shawnee duck the prophet. The one-eyed Shawnee duck the prophet. His blind eye revealed an inward vision of a land cleansed of the and restored as the paradise of the great spirit. with you, say I'm going to deal with you. Such a vision would not have been nearly so captivating if the prophet had had a powerful brother, the Shawnee chief, to come see, to make it real. Nearly so powerful, so powerful to come say, had a giant sized personality that made other chiefs see the ultimate ghost things. For every house in Tuckabatchee was stopped. About six feet high, straight with long, fine feathers, and altogether a daring, bold looking fellow, right? As one described him. Tecumseh was determined to win back the win. To do it, he sought to fulfill Dragon Canoe's prophecy. He sought to fulfill Dragon Canoe's prophecy. Dream of uniting all the Indian tribes into a single confederation. In the ultimate kind of, a kind of Indian Armageddon. Ridge met him in September 1811, a kind of Indian Armageddon. Let's go, talking mud flood. The Ridge met him in September 1811 at the Creek capital, Tuckabatchee, 
Tuckabashi, Alabama, September 11th, the rich man in the country capital of Tuckabashi. On the banks of the Tallapoose, well to the south of Georgia, the rich had arrived quietly with his men, and Tecumthe marched in like a Roman emperor. The Crouching Panther marched in like a Roman emperor as part of a grand procession of 40 foot soldiers. All of them dressed for war, with silver bands about the biceps, circles of fire around the eyes, circles of fire around the eyes, streaks of blood red down the chest, their hair plated in long black strands. The Kumse, the Kamtha, the Crouching Panther, the Blazing Comet, himself bore a pair of tall crane feathers, one white and one a dazzling vermilion. Vermilion. Right? Let's go. We're talking to Kamtha. Crouching Panther, the Blazing Comet. If that weren't awesome enough, a comet appeared in the sky for several nights. If that weren't awesome enough, a comet appeared. We're talking Blazing Comets, we're talking Crouching Panthers, we're talking Dragons, Tanin, Dinosaur, right? Sea Monster, Snake. A comet appeared in the sky for several nights. As if to celebrate Tecumthe's arrival, the first night a wild-eyed Tecumseh led a rousing, stomping dance of the lakes about a raging fire that reddened the skins of his warriors and threw their shadows to the trees. All the tribes had seen were spoiling for war, all with a common refrain. It was time to rise up. This was 1812, the year for which the famous war with Britain was named, although it actually ran through nearly 1815. It was not confined to one year, just as it was not confined to one set of antagonists. The war was ostensibly, ostensibly fought over the impressment of American seamen by a high-handed British Navy, which aggravated tensions already caused by trade restriction. But it also involved other fights that had been One had to do with the long-standing American desire to seize Canada. Another came from America's history of cruelty to Article 1, what does it say? Section 8 gives Congress the power to regulate commerce. America's history of cruelty. The Cherokee wanted no part of this. We're talking Cherokee. Now we're talking Chicago. The desire for civilization. The desire for civilization. They were not inclined to turn against their American mentors. Plenty of other tribes saw different. Plenty of other tribes fought differently, just as John Watts had once looked at the Spanish for help against the Americans. Now the other tribes looked to and aroused Britain to help them push American settlers back to the sea. The tribes wanted to smoke with the settlers, you know, to help them push American settlers back into the sea. The Comset, the Blazing Comet, the Crouching Panther. The Comset, speaker after speaker, rose to address the council on this theme. Comfort himself was among the last. His message was apocalyptic. The prophets invoked the dragons when either oppressed or stray from the path of life. Comfort himself was among the last. His message was apocalyptic as one startled white attendee summarized it. Kill the old chiefs, friends of peace. Kill the cattle, the hogs, and fowls. Do not work. Destroy the wheels and wounds. Throw away your plows and everything used by the Americans. Sing the song of the Indians of the Northern Lakes and dance their dance. Shake your war clubs. Shake yourselves. You will frighten the Americans. Their arms will drop from their hands. The ground will become a ball in mire to them. And you may knock them on the head with your war clubs. I will be with you, my Shawnees, as soon as our friends the British are ready for us. Lift up the war club with your right hand. Be strong and I will come and show you how to use it. I will come and show you how to use it, say, to come say. I will be with you. When an immense Creek great warrior dared question to come say about the wisdom of Satan. When an immense Creek great warrior dared question to come say about the wisdom of Satan. To come say fairly shoot the fury and declare a great warrior must have white blood to be so cowardly. A great warrior must have white blood to be so cowardly. If anyone doubted him, the Comte shrieked 
that he would stomp the earth so hard that he would level every house in Tuckapatchee. For every house in Tuckapatchee town would stomp down. Tecumseh the Blazing Comet, the Great Panther, Tecumseh's Shriek, that he would stamp the earth so hard that he would level every house in Tuckapatchee. Rich had his doubts about that, but he said nothing. He soon assured the new American president, President the quizzical James Madison, that Tecumseh's rhetoric had done nothing for the Cherokees. <laughs> Tecumseh's rhetoric had done nothing for the Cherokees. We turned away our ears and never listened to the motivations of the enemies of our father. They say, but then something alarming happened. On December 16th, when the bridge was back at Ustanala, Ustanalu, Ustanala, the earth did indeed shake. The earth did indeed shake, delivering itself of deep rumblings that rattled even the richest house. For every house was stone down to the magic. The earth indeed, indeed shake. Scattered the birds into the air until their shadows darkened the ground and spooked all the livestock, such that the horses nearly knocked over the fence posts of the corrals. It was the Kamsay's doom. He did have supernatural powers. He had to. It was a terrifying thought, but almost impossible to deny. First the come, then this, the ultimate ghost dance, a rattling of the whole cosmos, and the tremors kept on for weeks as if the world were first. Wow. Ah, uh, let me know what you can do with them. For the dragons are invoked by the prophets, when either the people are oppressed or stray from the path of the First to come, then this, the ultimate ghost ends, a rattling of the whole cosmos, and the tremors kept on for weeks, as if the world were the first part. As if the world were the first part. Episode number 27, when the moon played to have those not lose the ball, understanding put forth her voice at the top of high places. She standing with the paths meet. She standing at the gates of the entry of the city. Let's go one time for one time, one time for the tribe tribe. All praise to the Most High.